Welcome back to St. Jude and Five. Today we will be discussing our nationally recognized oncology research program. Through partnerships with some of the world's top research institutions and ph pharmaceutical manufacturers, the program is bringing pioneering clinical trials right here to St. Jude. I am with David Park, our amazing medical director for the Crossan Cancer Institute. Thank you so much for being here today. Maybe we can start with the basics. What is a clinical trial? So uh, simply put, a uh, clinical trial is a, a way is a way to test and prove mm -hmm. the efficacy as well as the safety of any therapeutic modality, be it uh, vaccines, for instance, for coronavirus, mm -hmm. or in our discussion, uh, new medications, new treatments for cancer. And I know that we have had so many clinical trials underway. Uh, maybe you could share um, some of the trials that we have underway that you would really like to um, have our team hear about today. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we, we just have uh, uh, an immense uh, number of trials that we're doing at St. Jude. As a community cancer institute or cancer center, uh, I believe that we have probably the largest clinical trial program in Southern California. Which is amazing. Yeah, uh, probably up to 50 plus trials running at one time for a variety of malignancies. Um, just to highlight a few, we have one that applies to women who have breast cancer, uh, who have had surgery and now need uh, what we call adjuvant or uh, a therapy with endocrine therapy or hormone therapy. And uh, we are testing uh, a new class of anti-hormone therapy, which mm. uh, is really exciting. In fact, St. Jude, a St. Jude patient was the first in the world to be enrolled in this pivotal trial. It's amazing. It really is exciting. And so with that being said, uh, it is exciting that we, we are on the forefront of such clinical trials. With all of the work that we have underway already, what do you see is coming in our future at St. Jude and in the way of clinical trials? Right. So, um, I mean, we're an we're, we're energetic bunch. Uh, <laughs> we don't rest here. And so now, for us, the next level in clinical trials, so there's different phases in clinical trials. There's a phase three, mm -hmm. phase two. And, and the most challenging clinical trial is uh, a phase one trial is to have a phase one program where we're, we're testing the, er, the, the first uh, time sometimes in humans that we're testing a potential uh, a drug that may help mm -hmm. uh, in the treatment of cancer. So phase one trials are generally limited to academic centers like mm -hmm. universities, but uh, at St. Jude, uh, we have actually uh, launched and we will soon launch our uh, phase one program literally within weeks. And, and that's just a testament of the uh, reputation that St. Jude has gathered through all these years, built through all these years in the clinical trials community, both in academia as well as pharma. And uh, yes, I mean, we're very excited. We'll be the regional phase one center for Providence and Orange County. And patients will actually have opportunities who, to uh, be on these trials who have no f other options that are actually approved for their condition. Can you share with us what what benefits you see from participating in a clinical trial? Sure, um, I'm, I'll, I'll share actually a patient story. Mm -hmm. um, this gentleman, uh, he's an older gentleman who uh, is Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, he was diagnosed with stage four metastatic incurable pancreatic cancer in the summer of 2019. Mm -hmm. So we are in the fall of 2021, right. beyond two years, which is really incredible. Very. or somebody who has stage four pancreatic cancer with a prognosis on average anywhere between eight to 12, and if you're doing really well, 16 months. Okay. So this gentleman went through the standard treatments uh, that we use, the FDA approved uh, treatment regimens, uh, but eventually he needed something else. And, and through our molecular genetics program mm -hmm. and our clinical mm -hmm. trials program, we're able to identify a mutation in the cancer that we could target. 
and, and we have this uh, uh, special clinical trial that is actually uh, uh, testing a drug, an uh, oral drug, uh, called a PARP inhibitor that can target that particular mutation. And he's been uh, doing this since uh, March of 2020. And it's incredible. Okay. His cancer has responded, mm -hmm. is in check, the liver lesions are smaller, he's eating well, he's doing the things that he loves, gardening, his daughter, who is there because obviously uh, 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 he's an older gentleman, uh, she, the whole family thinks this is a miracle. And, and the special thing about this case is that in the United States, mm -hmm. we are really trying hard to reach out to either the minority communities or, or people who have language barriers because they are the ones that are underrepresented in our clinical trials. So for him to be in a clinical trial like this, it's really, really cool. And, and, and the whole team is so happy. Every time I see him once a month, I mean, it, it's just he has no side effects. I'm not saying that every trial drug that we use has no side effects, but uh, this is really a neat story, a story of personalized medicine, a story where we are reaching out to the uh, uh, patients who are underrepresented in our trials, mm -hmm. uh, and we're really proud of that. That's an amazing example and, and just a, a truly heartwarming story to hear. I hear about personalized uh, medicine in particular focused on cancer, and that just makes so much, um, so much sense. And also just the ongoing work that we have to be not only knowing our community, but making sure that we truly are reaching out to our diverse communities. Um, in and surrounding St. Jude. So switching gears just a little bit, just to also uh, get to know you, um, the personal side of you. So if you go up to Starbucks, uh, what's your go-to order? So uh, this was not a pre-planned question. No. And I'll just let you know, I don't go to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're two peas in a pot. I don't either. Yeah. So that's all right. I stick to so my team. So I, I, I don't know how to order at Starbucks. I don't know like the grande and those uh, little uh, things. So, But my wife loves Starbucks. Okay. And when she always tells me to get her a vanilla latte. Oh. So I get one for her and four for me because I don't know what else to get. <laughs> Well, there we have it. That's great. It has to be iced. Iced. Oh, well, there we have it. Yeah. So now switching to a different venue, you walk into this venue and there is karaoke and you've got to choose your karaoke song. What are you going to sing? Okay. So I haven't been to karaoke <laughs> in years. Uh, we did uh, go to karaoke right before our, our oldest daughter, uh, Toby, left for college. Okay. And uh, um, I don't know why we did that. We were in LA and uh, Koreatown and doing all sorts of things. And we ended up at a karaoke. So what song did I choose? I think I chose, so people don't know this about me, but I grew up in South America. Oh. Yeah. So um, I actually chose a Julio Iglesias song. Wow. Yeah, because <laughs> I grew up singing Julio Iglesias when I was in South America. I can't remember the title now, uh, but uh, uh, that's what I sang. Well, thank you for sharing and that. And there's about video you. to prove it. Oh, right. Well, we're going to have to get our hands on that video. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it. Thanks for joining us. If there are other specific topics you have in mind, let me know. Until then, St. Jude, stay strong.